Amazing, uh, interesting panel today. Uh, a di very diversified woman and uh, coming from very different countries. Uh, I can see, I think, the continent, not the country. Uh, so our subject for uh, today's uh, discussion is more of impact of technology on business. But before I hop into that, I would uh, love to invite Dr. Brezista to introduce herself and eventually Shivangi, Natalia, and Osinga. Doctor, please. Thank you. Ciao a tutti. I am uh, Benedetta Paraviano. I am a doctor in law. And uh, I live in Dubai since uh, 2002. In the last two years, I've moved back uh, mainly to Italy because I'm working on several projects uh, uh, with more deep um, importance for me at this stage of my life. Um, I am uh, the vice president of a charity uh, association, national association called Angels. Uh, with this association, since 2008, I took care of uh, children coming for, from more afflicted areas and I treat them in Italy by uh, taking care of all the expenses related to the trips and by letting them have uh, liver transplants because the majority of them they were coming from Gaza, strip by coincidence, and they were having a hepatoblastoma, which is the liver cancer. So um, along the years, I always take care about uh, to care about. Uh, human rights with a special focus on uh, ladies' rights. In fact, uh, now my main project is called uh, Women in Law, and it's a project against the female genital mutilation. I always involve the institutional levels of uh, my government, or also outside the government. And I also involve uh, um, small and medium enterprises, and sometimes uh, I have the luck to involve big enterprises working uh, with my projects. Uh, the majority of uh, the big um, enterprises were like uh, Ferrero, Dubai Duty Free, uh, Gargash, uh, Alfa Romeo Motors, so FCA. Uh, but also, I like very much to work with uh, small and medium enterprises because I have uh, also a small and medium enterprise called Film Service since 2014. And uh, uh, I very much believe the um, charity and the humanitarian work can help the small and medium enterprises to build also their own uh, credibility to build also a social, a better, more deep social impact. Because, for example, uh, if you relate your small enterprise to a beautiful charity project, to a, uh, an important uh, or uh, social project, of course you can have the benefit not only to do a good job for the society or for a special cause, but also to uh, be on news, to be uh, in a certain circle of uh, very high profile networking and so on. Now, I would like to take this beautiful opportunity today to invite all of you on the 15th of uh, December in Dubai Mall in a special gallery called the Digital Gallery. It's in uh, China uh, Mall, it's the new extension of Dubai Mall. At 6 o'clock I will uh, uh, present a special NFT, a video art, uh, art NFT called Winners. And it's a beautiful story behind this NFT because I hear one of the gentlemen was, he's uh, an expert uh, in this kind of uh, field. So actually with these uh, NFT winners, uh, which is portraying um, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed El Fazar, his son, during the Royal Ascot. In 2016 I was um, at the uh, parade ring at the Royal Enclosure and uh, His Highness and his son were looking at the Queen. 
So I was just one meter from them and I took the picture and uh, on uh, 15 of December we will present this NFT because the proceeds of the sales I will use to take out from Gaza one of my patients. It is Ara I know her since she's five years old and now she's 19. I, she has a liver transplant, so she was having a liver cancer. I took care of her when she was five. I made her having this transplant. She stayed in Italy two years because of the recovery time. And she came yearly every, every single year in Italy for the medical control. Now, of course, the situation there is very critical. And I am very sorry that such a beautiful mind, talented and very uh, particular girl, because now she's 19 years old, she will be missing the opportunity to have a better future because actually they bombed her house and she lost uh, all the passports for all the families. So now I am in an issue to deliver a new passport, uh, um, making the authority. So I just thought it's better I ask my government to, to give a gift. Uh, uh, Italian passport to, to her family, uh, but I need the funds because usually if you ask, ask a government to do things, they will get disappointed. It's better to ask one straight ahead, so I asked for the difficult part of the passport and the economical part I wish I will solve uh, with uh, selling this beautiful NFT on the 15th. So I invite all of you, not for buying eventually, but for telling friends, telling entrepreneurs who might have uh, the passion to collect uh, NFT art and who might be interested to um, buy something related to the Royal Highnesses, also for the prestige of the thing and for having also a beautiful reward on the media because we are very, we're very like uh, respected by the local media, Italian media, American media. If you Google my name online, it will come hundreds of pages in different languages. So this is my way to reward the companies, the entrepreneur, the single person who are helping me. I always try to involve them as much as I can in my circle, in my network. And because I have always a uh, uh, humanitarian project, I always have to keep up uh, with uh, a lot of needs uh, of people because I receive many messages, uh, people are expecting me to help them, I'm just a human being, I'm not a government uh, person, I'm just a normal person like uh, all of us today, like all of us in the world, but you know when uh, you are a private uh, um, uh, citizen is even more difficult, you need all your will, all your strength and you need of course the help uh, of people. So I thank you for your attention and I hope I'll see you all of you just for moral support uh, in the Dubai Mall on the 15 at 6 o'clock. Grazie. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. It's okay. Uh, I think then I will move to Shivangi. Uh, I know her from India, doing uh, amazing sustainable fashion, and then eventually move to Dubai. I'll not take her uh, mic, of course. So the mic is yours, but please uh, keep it short, and simple. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on this panel, and I just want to say you were extremely inspiring. Um, I I started sustainable fashion. Um, not in the lines of as much humanitarian work as you're doing already, but uh, fashion has always been the largest polluter in, on this planet, and with the increase uh, in uh, fast fashion, and people just learning how to use and throw clothing like it doesn't matter, I feel like now is the time that you need to talk about this, because we're gonna have landfills of products uh, creating so much wastage where we don't know where all that is going to go and we're actually taking away land that belongs to our future generations and this is criminal. So these are things that we need to change and we need to understand how waste can turn into something beautiful and that's the idea behind my brand. Uh, I am a fashion designer and a wardrobe stylist. I work for TVCs, films and my idea is just to bring sustainability to the forefront 
I am born and raised in Dubai. I was in India for about uh, three years, and that's when I got to get in touch with my country a little more. And I understood the scope of sustainability there and uh, the amount that India has to offer in this space. So I just want to bring that here, and uh, that's pretty much about me. Thank you. Thank you. In short and sweet. Uh, Natalia, uh, I know you. You are actually a very solid woman uh, coming from spirituality to yoga to NPR to AI. Why don't you introduce yourself and then we can continue the panel, please. Hello everyone, I'm Natalia. I'm from Ukraine. Well, a part of my life I was living in Ukraine, a part in Moldova. Uh, those countries are near and with different traditions, but uh, very nice uh, spirituality. And um, I'm a yoga guru and uh, an advocate. How I come into this? Because uh, my experience in my life is uh, coming near to my soul, to myself, and uh, to help to this world. I'm an NFT artist also, and uh, I wish uh, to do a charity jazz, and I have an art, like, uh, uh, I wish to, to give you my uh, art for help for this uh, amazing woman, please. I will be today. Yes. Wow, so the first time we had like uh, collaboration is already happening within the panel. <laughs> Thank you. Because we are queens. Yes. Super. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, all my life, uh, uh, like uh, art and uh, spirituality. Yeah. I'm a yoga teacher now, and uh, also I'm doing practice, and I wish yoga became the um, healthier like a room for uh, many, many options uh, for different kinds of people, hospitalities, medicine, and uh, so on. And I see that uh, yoga can be provided in digital, artificial digital programs, and uh, we can do it, and uh, we can solve a lot of people. Well, I also respect medicine, but uh, um, <laughs> uh, I'm usually going uh, to ask myself, my, to ask my body, and my soul, uh, what I wish and uh, what can do me happy at the moment and after uh, when I resolve the issue with myself after I go to use medicines. Uh, that's why uh, I think that um, we need to provide more spirituality in art and NFT art do, um, uh, through uh, artificial intelligence and uh, do uh, different kinds of uh, charity programs also and uh, fashion industry also and uh, so on uh, that because I see that um, women uh, is like our future uh, because women is about creativity women is about love and about health about uh, care and about safety Lovely. Thank, you. thank you so much can I hop into Moshi now? I have seen your LinkedIn. Oh my God, a lot, a lot of followers. And I know that you are running seven plus businesses. Uh, yes, uh, not seven now, they are five. Okay. But uh, when you asked me how to introduce me, I was like, you can talk about the things that are an umbrella, the major things. So let me introduce myself. My name is Noshi Mukhtar. I'm an entrepreneur since last 11 years. And during my tenure, I have built multiple businesses. They often call me a venture builder. My businesses are covering an umbrella of three major objectives, including supporting women empowerment, economic diplomacy, which goes global, and supporting innovation. So when we talk about these three, we cover them through various services. And let me now tell you what kind of services my businesses are offering to people. We help companies expand their market outreach. I have a PR and marketing agency. We help senior executives, thought leaders, and business owners establish themselves as a brand. So I also have a personal branding department. 
we take care of the presence of various businesses into the market through media. So we have a media department, which is a full-fledged department, primarily the digital and print publishing media. We also take care of uh, expansion and growth. So we have a business strategy department that takes care of business expansion and growth. We have corporate services that take care of establishing businesses in the UAE and Saudi. We also have an events department, which is a company of its own. So we take care of hosting conferences, seminars, summits, and trade shows. This is all about me. Wow. What a lovely family that we have. Uh, so I will not uh, actually let you leave the mic. I have a first question for you. When you started your business in your sucking days, uh, what was the experience? Did anything happen like you used technology? Technology can be anything. I started with technology. technology. Yeah, right. So uh, how exactly was the story and how that can impact maybe more and more SMEs in the market? Your thoughts? So uh, let me tell you, Mr. Arajit, I started very small. Uh, many people think that I should not talk about it, but I always talk about it because I love the idea. Um, I started in 2011 from a kitchen table and my laptop. I was a new mom, my baby was eight months, maybe six months old. And I felt that it wouldn't be fair if I spent time in office away from the baby. I, was, uh, I hired help. Uh, let's say many, who used to stay in my home and take care of my child. So for two months I experimented with office and things like that. She used to sedate him to make him sleep most of the hours. And I discovered this because he would stay up all night. So I said, why am I doing this to my child? And I stopped there and then. I got rid of the lady and I used my kitchen table as my office desk. And I'm very proud of it. I launched. So that was the beginning. Uh, we were a content creation agency. Um, and then I hired two employees, and that was the beginning. So I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, definitely. Um, at the same time, I have got uh, Natalia. Uh, talking about how she is uh, an artist, but then I would love to understand how exactly tech is helping you to grow your art and then put it in front of maybe the global audience. Your thoughts, please. Well, I paid it from a little, but how we can improve for blockchain, for technology, for energy, uh, it was very nice. Uh, in 2016-17, I was uh, participating in one project in blockchain branch about uh, biometric identification of the system. And uh, three years I was involved in blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency and <laughs> this absolutely amazing, amazing technology. And I meet a lot of uh, very nice people. One of them, I just got a chari. The second one is uh, George Sebastian. <laughs> Hello, George. And also, a lot, a lot of people which uh, are in different kind of direction, the millions of uh, people. Well, after when I finish this project, and uh, I think that why I can take my paintings and uh, come to charity auction in my blockchain summit. And I started to come from a lot of life with my paintings to my blockchain summit. For church auction. Well, it was very nice and amazing um, experience because after this uh, challenge, I start. I became the NFT. I start to understand what is NFT, and I see that NFT uh, in NFT can be everything absolutely, and everyone can find in blockchain in technology, new technology, uh, all kinds of um, specialties. It was very nice because uh, now uh, people divide for 
physical art, physical artist and digital artist or uh, something new and something old. Uh, but we try, all of us trying to find some meaning, yes, yeah, so or to connect to those uh, physical and digital, to, to come and use something new in new technologies. And uh, now um, I'm artist uh, and also like uh, yoga and energy practice, I find there's a solution for uh, more people and it's possible. Super. Uh, to be very honest, if you look at uh, the world, earlier artists used to host a lot of art exhibition. Nowadays, in a very common way, people are doing it online and then eventually they went to blockchain. Even I know Metaverse, where people are selling their art and it's happening. It's not only the paintings, but yeah, handicrafts and a couple of other activities. And then uh, when we talk about those kind of infrastructure, uh, there are companies, startups who are coming up with a disruption where they want to sell garments. And when I'm talking about garments, I have the right kind of lady with me. Uh, so would love to understand when you started your journey, you have probably dwelling between India, Dubai and a couple of other uh, countries as well. I know that you have been to Europe. So what is your thought? How exactly the technology impacted the fashion or rather you would call the fashion tech? If you can define that. Um, so I started my brand in 2020, uh, almost peak of COVID. And uh, the first thing that I had to learn, me as a person, I would call myself technologically challenged because I wasn't the best at understanding how important this would be. But when I started my business, I knew I have to learn everything online. So we started the business online. And we were at a point where we were starting photo shoots online. We were doing things uh, virtually, mostly. And uh, what I understood is we think uh, taking a company global is difficult. But actually, if you kind of put it on your vision board and think about where you want to reach, I had a stockist approach me from the US just because they saw me online. So this was something that I never expected would happen for the brand so early on. And the same thing happened with me coming back to Dubai. People here started noticing the clothing and they wanted me here. And from there on, I was able to also transition into styling for films, which was uh, something I never really thought of I was gonna do as a head of wardrobe. But all of this, uh, the common point between all of this was everything happening virtually. I didn't have to go to somebody, I didn't have to do any kind of physical meeting, none of it, everything happened online. And I think now uh, we have to focus on the fact that even after COVID, there's so much that's going to happen online, so it's something that you just have to start accepting. And uh, that's, that's the way the future is going to go towards. Super. I have a next question to talk to Benedetta. Uh, I know her in person. Uh, we have been talking with each other for quite a long number of time. Uh, my question to you is, uh, when you use any kind of your project floating in the market, if I ask you as an entrepreneur, how do you take care of it on the technology perspective as well as on the marketing perspective? Is digital media helping you to grow or is it only the physical media which is giving you a lot of boost? Well, um, I don't sell uh, with my company any products. I sell services because I am an advisor and consultant uh, both for private sector entrepreneurs or for government. For example, I helped many governments to sign each other to ministries, same minister, minister of culture of a certain country, minister of culture of another country to sign memorandum of understanding. And then there is the implementation part because the memorandum is something a bit theoretical, but uh, it gives uh, a good vibe and perspective because it's the first step uh, of what uh, can be really done and practical. Um, and so I can also follow up the practical. Honestly, I feel very much uh, confident and relieved when I can follow the thoughts uh, in action, when I can transform, because I really don't like uh, just the speculative situations, speculative people. I really like those uh, 
um, companies and people that transform their vision in a clear action, in clear real possibilities. Uh, so I'm very much a, a person of action. Uh, related to the um, uh, internet world, I cannot hide the fact that uh, uh, when my social media growth, for example, uh, people had a better perception of me, which was uh, really, honestly, the, I was disgusted at uh, the beginning from such attitude because I say, my God, I saved so many human lives and uh, I feel uh, uh, myself, I, I am already, like, I know who I am. Why I am nobody if I have only 20,000 followers and the people, they look at you, uh, wow, if you have more followers or if you have millions of followers. And then I went to the Cristiano Ronaldo account and I find out that are all bots. You know, most the majority of the uh, millions of followers of Cristiano, they are produced by Instagram uh, themselves to keep high level, you know, to keep Instagram. Uh, because honestly, it's uh, the half of Instagram is a black, half of social media is a black, it's a, it's a lie. Uh, but because we are in a world that is uh, honestly really much transforming and going to this artificial intelligence that is also beneficial for people who know how to use it. For example, sometimes you can write an essay if you have uh, the right questions to, to give to the artificial intelligence and you, and you ask uh, to different, different angles because if you ask if only one question, you will have something that it's really basic and uh, ridiculous. But if you collect the different angles of questions to give to artificial intelligence, you can get a kind of nice essay. And of course, you can also put yourself, your personality, your change into it. So it can be beneficial for saving time sometimes. But still, we are at the beginning of the path. And still, the physical world is very important, in fact, Today we see it. I don't really like those um, um, conventions or um, conferences that happen online only. They are cold. But of course, uh, I like to interact with people um, by video when you are far away, when we met first time and we start to brainstorm about the possibility of cooperating. We had the video chat and was beneficial because at least, you know, people, you see also how they move the, uh, the, the body language, how a person can be if uh, it's open or if it needs a bit of care to be more open or if it's generous, great, uh, grateful because uh, gratitude is the first step. But uh, by coming back to your uh, question, uh, social media, unfortunately, are still very important, especially for the new generation. So I think it's our duty for those who have uh, more followers to give good examples because uh, now the society is getting flat. The young girls, they look like each other too much. If you are blonde, you are like a stereotype. If you are brunette, you are another stereotype. And all of them, they look the same, especially when you are, uh, they are in a young age because there is no, um, uh, there are, uh, the roots are not strong enough like before. Just one generation back, we still can play when we are kids and we don't have mobile phones and we have to use a coin to put inside the phone. Lovely. Um, I'll hop into Natalia with a very simple uh, question. Um, I know you have a background of artificial intelligence. So when she took example of bot, mainly the Instagram bots, of course that is there, we look at LinkedIn, where you probably, uh, at least for me, I don't accept connections and the others I know them. They can be the followers, but I don't accept them. Uh, what is your take? How exactly do you feel that your social media, your work, is having an impact with artificial intelligence. Well, firstly, what I see that uh, it needs to be an individual content. Yes. Original. 
the second is, uh, of course, uh, we need to have strategy. I mean that uh, to choose what exactly you wish to provide, what exactly you wish to show to people, which step. Uh, and uh, third, I think that uh, your community, yeah, uh, and your trusted community to interest more people, more uh, youth, more uh, women and men that you enjoy. Uh, that is my vision. And uh, I wish to say, to say about more, for example, like I have volunteer art and I have yoga, yeah, and I do practice. Well, how they are uh, very close to each other because uh, when you paint, you also meditate. When you meditate, you also <laughs> like paint, yeah. We paint, our, we, we are creators of our life. And what I wish to say that today we find um, a commune line, commune way with Alexa, uh, that Alexa is lover of meditation and she is digital designer and she do an uh, application. But me is practicing. I meditate. I love to hear people. And <laughs> now today, <laughs> right on this uh, amazing Odeo Summit, we are coming to agreement to have cooperation together. That's how people unite in very small idea, but for big, big uh, chance to help people. Thank you so much for that. I'll go to uh, Noshin. I have uh, interesting facts to give all the audience. If you look at program language, languages like Rust or Python, uh, it's pretty well treated in the CI and ML world. If I'm not wrong, uh, I've been coding in Python since 2000, when I was treated as a guy with uh, probably uh, a snake and a uh, flute in Indian road. People never thought that Python is a language. Uh, so my question to you is, when you see any kind of technologies, a coder, when you take them in your team, what is the key thing that you see in him or her before you recruit? Is it the coding skill that you check? Or is it the algorithm skill that you check? Or do you actually check the human first and then the skill? The human, of course. What I personally believe and what I have believed in building my teams is very strongly. If you are strong on humanity, if you're very strong on your values, if you're able to deal with people's values, and if you're committed to what you wish to do, that is all that's needed. Because it's a team, right? And we all work in teams. So my weaknesses will be covered by perhaps a few of my colleagues and their weaknesses will be covered through me. So skill can grow, can decline, but it's the human factor that's going to sustain a team in a greater way. And it's the human factor, your, your empathy, your human emotions, your feelings about your work, your feelings about your team members and the workplace, then your commitment and dedication towards your profession your zest to learn more and grow out of your limitations, and then your willingness to make things possible, not just for yourself, but for the entire team and the greater mission of the company that will make it successful. So honestly, when hiring and thinking about inclusion in teams, I'm mostly talking to them about their aspirations and trying to understand where they're coming from and what their greater vision is how they will behave with other members on team rather than their qualifications and you know there can be thousands of people who are highly skilled in a language, in a programming language. There could be thousands of people who have similar level of skill according to their degree in a specific, let me say, qualification. But what makes them different is the human side. So over here. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's conclude this panel. I'll be asking only one single question. I need uh, all of your feedback one by one, please. Uh, what is technology for you in two words? What is technology for you? I'll start with Dr. Um, uh, human help. Okay. If 
you have ethics behind it. But uh, if you don't have ethics, uh, it can be very dangerous. She won't be this. Um, I'd say it's the way forward and something that has to be accepted with empathy and humanity in thought. Okay. Creation possibilities. Creation of possibilities. And possibilities. Okay. I believe it's a tool, like all of you have said. So it's a tool that we are going to use to make positive change possible in the world. Lovely, brilliant. Well, uh, I'll set the tone for the next to next panel. There is a deep tech panel which is coming up. Uh, before I conclude, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about deep tech. From deep tech to deep tech, like you can actually uh, simulate anyone, clone anyone. For an example, if you're sending a voice message to someone, I'll showcase you a few of the cases. Uh, a father got a call from someone out of blue when he was driving. And someone actually asked for an answer, saying that your kid is with me. If you don't transfer me a couple of million dollars, uh, she will be no more. With a fear, he asked that, can I have a discussion with my kid? And she, uh, of course, cried on the back. The phone call in the back is actually talking with the voice of his daughter, which is a four-year-old kid. Father transferred the money. While doing that, he went back to the school to cross-check whether it actually happened or not. He found out nothing happened. The kid is there. It was a deep fake voice which actually was so promising that the parents got convinced. Oh my God, my kid is in that. And that's the future that we are looking at. It's not about only the video, it's the voices. So before you send any kind of message in open media, you need to understand what you are sending and how you are sending. Our retina, our five different Indriya, we call it in Sanskrit. We need to understand what to share, how to share. I'll not take much of the time, but yeah, of course, uh, we are open for a few questions, if that is okay. Questions from audience, please. Isn't it something, this deep fake, isn't it something that we started talking only last couple of months? No, sir. It actually started before COVID. I took a workshop in NTPC long, long back. Deep fake is not, not new. It actually started long back. But the impact we are watching now, yes. Any question from the audience? Else we are good to go before the lunch. I just had one comment. Yes, please. Normally tech panels are full of men. <laughs> I'm so delighted to see four women sitting there. Thank you. Uh, um, let me add something here. Sorry to please. make you so I think you're so right, Dr. Christopher. In 2021, I launched Innovation in Technology Summit, and very few women were there. In all of the discussion panels, no women at all. And this question was raised there why there are no women on this panel? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I'm very delighted to see you. Thank you so much. If you look at our panel and the combination, probably you will get a flavor why we are mixing and matching uh, people like this. And that's the reason we don't have any other men apart from me <laughs> in this panel. And that's the reason I kept it free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, MC. Uh, wonderful takeaway from this panel here. Uh, may I please invite uh, CA Dr. Indra Dev uh, Narayan, Vice President of WSNE, to uh, felicitate the moderator, Mr. Arvindji Khandalare.
Can I take a four of you? Uh, sure. Uh, ma'am, ladies, please stay back for a minute. Uh, Mr. Ajit sir, may I request you to please felicitate our panel members, uh, Ms. Noshi Mukhtar. Natalia Lianka. <laughs> Next panel member, Ms. Shivangi Gandhi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 